Right here we got two um, 600 volt, 250 amp uh, molded case circuit breakers. And uh, this is a Cutler Hammer right here. And this is a Westinghouse here. They're both the same type and style. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the old Westinghouse and we're gonna replace the front of it with the Cutler Hammer, the new breaker. So we're gonna make this old one look new again. So to replace the front of these breakers, uh, all you need is a, a simple Phillips screwdriver. Uh, inside there's a, another screw, uh, it's a Phillips as well, but just a bit bigger. And that's when we're, when you can uh, change out the adjustable trip, uh, magnetic trip here. Uh, this one doesn't have one, but you can add one from a, another breaker or order the part if you need to. And we're gonna use a meter just to check the continuity and make sure that the breaker is operating correctly. And when we get inside, we're also gonna look at the contacts, see uh, uh, the use on the contacts, the wear, and uh, you'll be able to tell that by just looking at them and any pitting or um, wear on the contacts from operation. And usually you can be able to say that if it's 60% um, of the contacts are good or 80%, um, it's pretty easy to tell. There's just a thickness that you can look at on the actual contact. So what we're gonna do before we fix this breaker, replace the front cover, we're gonna check that it is a working breaker and that we have uh, continuity um, on the contacts. So I'm simply just gonna operate it uh, close to open, or open to close. So I have it in the off position right now. So there should be no continuity. So I'm just gonna turn my meter on. And I just simply going across with my meter from one side of the contact to the other. So right now we're in the off, the open position on the breaker. So there's no continuity through. So I'll check all three phases. <clears throat> and then I simply just close the breaker, or turn it on to the on position. And then we'll check the three phases again. So that's telling me that the contacts are making good contact and the breaker is closed in the closed position and we should be able to open it up and take a look and see where the wear is on the contacts to tell us what, how the life on this breaker is. These breakers are typically used for um, motor protection in MCC panels or uh, branch circuit protection. Uh, you'll find them uh, a lot of the times, uh, this style of breaker in Allen Bradley um, 2100 series MCC panels. And they go inside, uh, usually a lug in, lug out uh, configuration. So next we're gonna open the old one up and check out the contacts. And then we can uh, take out the block where the magnetic uh, trip unit will go. And then we can open up the new one and take the cover off of there to replace the old one. And then as well as the magnetic trip, we'll uh, replace that, put it in the old one as well. And I'm simply doing this by, with a Phillips screwdriver. There's, a, there's, eight, there's eight screws that you take off on the front cover. And you can do this with a drill if you're comfortable make go a little faster for you. So there's four bigger screws, two at the top, two at the bottom, and then there's four smaller screws, two in the middle, and just two right on the sides at the top right here. So I just took all those out, and just put those aside for after. And sometimes you might need a, a flat blade screwdriver just to kind of pop this cover off if it's giving you any difficulties. Sometimes it's if it's been on there for a while, it's not the easiest to take off. So, so I just simply just take that right off. And this front part will come off. And um, you want to be careful. There's a part on here where 
um, the indication, uh, green obviously for open, uh, red is for closed. Bring it down. Um, this indication, um, when you operate the handle to open to close, you want to make sure that you don't lose those pieces. So they're sometimes a little tricky to put back in. So we're going to just simply put the cover aside and we can look at the contacts. And so this is the inside of the breaker right here. Um, you got your arc shoots here that uh, dissipate energy if the breaker is ever operated when it's energized and under load. So if you were to get a trip on this breaker, these contacts right here would come up, would break off their connection point at the bottom and uh, these arc shoots here would uh, dissipate the energy um, so you don't get a big arc flash inside your equipment. Another thing to look at when you open this up is this handle here. Sometimes these handles can uh, break and uh, chip and this is what connects to the mechanism on your um, MCC door to operate the breaker open and closed. So you want to look at that and make sure that it's it's good to go. Um, it's fairly easy to change. There's one little screw in here and you can just simply just take that screw off and find a, a replacement, put it on so it's uh, good to go. So once you got it open, uh, you can look at the contacts here. This is the contact that is the moving part. And um, you can see in here, just a kind of a protruding part of the contact. That's the actual part that you'll see wear in if it's ever been operated. So you want to check that. And then there's also a part at the bottom where it makes contact with that. Uh, there'll be some pitting there if there's, you know, been operation under load. And this one's looking pretty good. I'd, I'd say I'd put it around um, 80 to 85%. So the, this is something that we wouldn't replace the contacts on. Uh, these arc shoots, if you ever were to need to replace the contacts, these arc shoots simply just come out. Uh, you take a flat blade screwdriver and just pry them up and they simply just come right out of their spot. Sometimes there's a little bit of glue, but uh, if you just pry a little bit, you can get them out. Um, and then if you want, you can, when you put them back with a little bit of glue, uh, just some regular adhesive, whatever you got in the shop, uh, just to put them back on. And then they just slide back into place like so. When you got it open, you can also look at the operation of the breaker, uh, look at all the moving parts, uh, see if you need to oil anything, grease anything, so it operates better. So I'll just simply open or close the breaker. And then you can see the contacts, uh, they're closed right now. So they're making contact at the bottom and uh, open them. You can see it's opening, um, make the break there. Um, so yeah, you can look at the, the mechanism here and just um, grease, add any um, lubricant that you need. So I'll leave it open for now. Uh, next, we'll go and uh, show you how to change the adjustable trip. So it's simply just a Phillips screwdriver, just a bigger one. And there's three screws right in here that you take off. And then this simply just slides right out. And then we can uh, replace that as well. adjustable trip unit. So Cutler, Hammer, Eaton, and Westinghouse there and as well as Allen Bradley can all usually this style you want to look at the front of your breaker um, there's HMCP, HJD, there are different styles of breakers uh, for different pieces of equipment. Uh, they'll have different ratings on them 
but most of these will fit as long as you have the the same style you obviously want to check that it's gonna fit in your breaker and this style they're both um, JD uh, style breakers so that tells me that uh, the adjustable trip units and the covers are gonna work for one another another thing when you're taking out the adjustable trip you want to take out the lugs because those are uh, holding that in so it's just simply take an allen key and uh, take these lugs out Depending on what uh, equipment you're going to be operating with these, this breaker, uh, they have different uh, magnetic trip units. So this specific one is good for uh, 150 amps. Uh, this one didn't, doesn't have an adjustable one. It's an old uh, thermal trip unit. So we want to take that out and replace it with the uh, one that will work for the equipment that the customer needs. Next, we're gonna take the, the uh, handle off because we're gonna replace that. This one's a little beat up. So it's just simply um, a smaller Phillips screwdriver. And there's just one, one screw right here that you need to take off. That just simply just comes right off. And this is a good time where you can look at everything, um, add any lubricant or grease if you need to for the moving parts. Now that we got the old one taken apart, um, we can lubricate where we need to and clean out uh, simply with a rag and some isopropanol or whatever you use in the shop to clean. So we'll put this aside for now and uh, we'll open up the new one and uh, take the parts we need and replace it on the old one. The reason we're doing this today, uh, we have an old breaker with the cover that is no longer readable or eligible. Uh, the insides of this breaker is still in good condition. Um, it's about 80, 80 to 85 percent left on the contact life. Uh, we're taking um, one that is relatively new. Uh, the contacts inside this specific breaker are no longer any good. Um, they've been worn down. So we can take simply take the cover from this one here and replace it onto the old one and we now have a, a breaker that looks like new again. The breaker, all the screws off. This is the same cover as before. We have eight screws, uh, two bigger ones down here, two bigger ones here, and then uh, two smaller ones here and two smaller ones here. And again, it's just a simple Phillips screwdriver to take those off. So then sometimes if it's giving you grief, you simply take a flat blade screwdriver, get it into a few of the spots, just kind of pry it up. This one's pretty easy to come up. And again, you just want to check, make sure that the indication um, doesn't fall out because it is kind of tricky to get it back in afterwards. And now all we're going to do is take this trip unit out of this, this breaker and put it into the, the other one with the good contacts. And we'll switch out the handle as well and put it onto the, the one with the the good contacts. These uh, breakers here, if you were to go to a wholesaler and uh, buy a new one, this is anywhere from $1,500 to $2,500. Um, we can give you one that is just as good um, for anywhere from 750 to to $1,000 Canadian. 
Just uh, one of the many benefits of uh, buy used equipment. Get a save, save a few bucks in the whole bank account there. We're taking the the handle from the the breaker that has the contacts are no longer good, and we're putting it into the breaker with the good contacts so that uh, we have a new handle. And it's simply just that one Phillips screw and it's screwed in. Make sure it's in there good. Now we're gonna take the trip unit out of the breaker that's no longer good and put it into the other breaker here. Now again, it's just a bigger Phillips screwdriver. Three, three Phillips screws. <laughs> this is like the best bloopers. <laughs> and no, I'm not taking a deuce. <laughs> I'm trying to get the screw out. Sometimes you need a little leverage to get the screw off. Obviously, I haven't been eating my Wheaties in the morning. <laughs> One thing you gotta remember to do before you take the chip unit out is you wanna make sure that the lugs aren't in place because they'll prevent you from taking the chip unit out. Um, the contacts from the chip unit are attached where the lugs go. So you just wanna make sure you take those off the bolts or the lugs where uh, the terminations are. So that's just usually a cover on the back. Uh, it's, sometimes it pops off, sometimes there's a couple screws that you gotta undo, and sometimes there's some glue that you gotta take off or pry off, but you can simply just put that back on after with the screws or it's a friction fit and you can add some more glue if you want to. Now that you got all three screws, off the trip unit. And your lugs out, your trip unit simply slides out like that. Make sure you don't lose any of the screws. Another thing you wanna check for before you use this specific trip unit, you wanna test it and make sure that it's operating correctly. And uh, luckily for you guys, I already did that. So now we got the trip unit out of the breaker with the bad contacts. We're gonna put that into the breaker with the good contacts and then take that cover as well and put it onto the breaker with the good contacts. So simply just do the opposite of when I was taking everything apart. So when you put the trip block in, you might need to get an uh, extra set of hands to hold the, the handle down. Just the mechanism that trip actually trips the breaker. It needs to be under, there's a little metal tab that needs to get under and you kind of need to hold the the handle down while somebody else can get one of the screws in. Okay, so once you got the new chip block into your breaker, you obviously want to test it, make sure that it uh, is functioning properly. So we're just simply going to close the breaker, reset the chip, Close your breaker and then take a screwdriver or your finger and there's a button on here, push to trip. And you just want to make sure that it opens your breaker. And then to reset, you simply push down as you were to open a breaker fully and it resets your trip and it's in the open, which is the off position. 
And now that we know that it's functioning properly, you just want to check that you didn't leave anything inside the breaker, like a screw, there's nothing loose and we'll get the cover, we'll put it back on and that'll be it for this video. And that'll be it for overhauling this breaker. So the cover just simply slides back on. <clears throat> Make sure you got it all push down to where it's supposed to be. You can just go around it and just check. And then take your screws, your Phillips screws, and just put them back into place and tighten them up. And once we get this cover back on, we'll do one more final check, make sure that the breaker is operating properly and it's ready to be put into service. Okay, so we got all the screws back in. So we just want to double check one more time that our brake is operating properly. Another thing too, you want to make sure that your indicating strips were, are, didn't get moved around. So when you're in the open position, you have the green showing, showing that it is not energized. And then when you go to close the breaker, you want to see the red indication knowing that it is on and it's closed. Um, test the trip, reset it, and then you can test it with your meter again. Just checking for continuity. So we'll go across all the phases. C phase, B phase, A phase, all open. We'll close the breaker and check again. And closed on C phase, closed on B phase, closed on A phase. So the breaker is operating properly. Always make sure your breaker's in the off position when it's not energized. And there you have it old to new again. If you're looking for any new or used electrical, go to www.savinaequipment.com and if you have any questions, just email us at sales at Thanks for coming out.